As you know, we are talking about surviving and overcoming the emotional storms of relationships. However, on yesterday, the question was put to us and we want to deal with that question today. And the question was, can one die from or of a broken heart? Can one die of a broken heart? And that is not a very, very easy answer. And we must not treat it casually because the business of a broken heart is real. It's very, very real. And broken heartedness can pose a serious health challenge to an individual. The good news is that a broken heart can be treated. A broken heart can be treated. I need us to know that this whole business of a broken heart is actually on God's agenda. The idea, the symptoms or the result of a broken heart is actually on God's agenda. It is not something that happens to us or will happen to us or that is happening to us that God is not concerned about. God is very, very much concerned about this business of a broken heart. Let me rush quickly to share with you how we know that this business of a broken heart is on the mind of God. You know, we read, we read uh, that for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son into the world that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. And when Jesus came, I want you to hear him and hear what was on his mind. When you look in the book of Luke, Luke the 18th, the fourth chapter rather, Luke, the fourth chapter and the 18th verse. I want you to hear what was on the mind of Jesus. Jesus went into the temple and it was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah or Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Listen to this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. For because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me, listen to this now, to heal the broken hearted. That's why we say to you that broken heartedness can be treated. Jesus said, God sent him with everything that God sent him to do to give sight to the blind, to make the lame to walk to heal the lepers, turn water into wine. With everything that God sent Jesus Christ to do, one of the things that Jesus was mandated to come to do was that God sent him to heal the broken hearted. 
That scripture is Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. So he came to preach the good news to the poor. And I must say here that uh, the poor is not talking about those who were economically poor. No, he's talking about poor in the spirit, poor in the spirit. And so not only did he come to preach to the poor, but also to heal the broken hearted. When I read that particular scripture, it became so clear to me that God is completely concerned about the totality of our emotional well-being. Because this business of being or uh, experiencing a broken heart is real. Now, I have to tell you that when you talk about healing broken heartedness, there is a radical solution. You know, a few days ago, the supervisor was uh, preparing meal and uh, she sent me to go and uh, increase the heat in the oven. And she said, uh, turn it on broil. And as you know, those of you who are accustomed to uh, the stove, you know when you turn it on broil, uh, you, you, you're serious about getting that thing hot right away. Well, the same it is. The way how you can turn up the heat to bring solution to broken heartedness is to actually embrace the fact that there are some things in life over which you have no control. And there are some things in life over which you have control. And so those things that you have no control over, be careful. Do not allow them to control your life. That's the radical approach to the transformation and the healing of broken heartedness. Because there are things in this world over which you have no control over. For example, you have no control over what people say to you, what people do to you, what people think about you. You have no control over it. However, you have a control on how you are going to respond, how you're going to respond to what people say about you, what people do to you, you have control over that. But what folk would say to you, what folk would do to you, what's going to happen around you, you have no control. You cannot control the rain. You cannot control the sunshine. You cannot control the earthquakes. You cannot control the tornadoes. There are things over which we have no control. And you must not allow those things to control your life. There are times in our lives that we must turn things over to God. I tell people sometimes Jesus actually, really, when he died, it was in that Gethsemane because he went to his father on three occasions. Father, can you let this cup pass over me? Father, can you allow this cup to pass over? Father, can you, will you allow this cup 
to pass over. And when he had no positive, affirmative result, he said, not my will, but your will be done. Friends, in this life, there are things over which we have control and there are things over which we have no control. What, what is a broken heart? What is a broken heart? We're trying to answer the question, can a person die from a broken heart? What is a broken heart? A broken heart is a metaphor for the intense emotional stress or pain one feels at experiencing great loss in your life or a deep longing. Broken heartedness is a result of an intense emotional stress <clears throat> or pain that you feel because of a great loss that has happened in your life. And we'll talk about some of those things that will be considered a great loss in your life. You see, when you have this deep emotional stress They trigger something in you. When I asked my son, I said, Solomon, if a person has a broken heart, will that cause them to die? And he was quick to say yes. And I followed up by asking, why, why are you saying yes? And the answer he gave made a lot of sense. Because when your heart is broken, it leads to certain emotional dimensions, among which stress, among which depression. And as he put it, when you are depressed, you lose the enthusiasm to live. You lose the enthusiasm to care for yourself. You lose the enthusiasm to want to press forward. And because you have no enthusiasm, no drive to live, you begin to not care for yourself. If you are taking medication, you stop taking the medication. If you are eating, you stop eating. If you are to be the person going out to be with people, you stop all of those things. Why? Because your heart is broken. Broken heartedness is real. And it is very, very serious. But the good news, it is treatable. It is treatable. What are some of the symptoms of a broken heart? When you when your heart has been broken, when you when you have that deep that thing that is weighed down in your belly, that pain, that alcohol, peroxide, Advil, Tylenol, nothing can get there. It's a pain that is beyond human comprehension. That pain, oh, triggers certain other kinds of things in your body. For example, chest pain can be the result of a broken heart. Shortness of breath can be the result of a broken heart. Sweating and dizziness can be the result of a broken heart. 
from an emotional standpoint, a broken heart can sometimes, oftentimes, cause you to experience deep emotional sadness. Deep emotional sadness. The kind of sadness that diamond and gold and flowers and good food and good clothing and a good place to live, none of those things can cause you to rise up and be happy. Broken heartedness can cause sadness. And I want you to listen because it is treatable. Broken heartedness is treatable. It is only when you fail to treat it and then you begin to experience these chest pains and shortness of breath and dizziness and sadness and the feeling of guilt. Broken heartedness can even cause you to feel guilty. It is said that oftentimes children can feel guilty when their parents divorce because sometimes, somehow, they feel as though they were responsible for their parents' breakup. Now, you know that's not true. But they feel, they think that they are the reason. And so brokenheartedness can, can, can be manifested emotionally in sadness, in guilt, and other kinds of feelings. It's a kind of feeling that you cannot control. I mean, it's a type that you just want to exit this world. And that's why you have to seek help. What are some of the causes for a broken heart? What are some of the causes, especially in the context of a relationship? You know, we're talking about relationship. Some of the things that can cause a broken heart like a breakup in a relationship, a marriage. Everything's going well, you thought. And then one day your husband comes or your wife comes and says, I no longer want to be in this relationship. It can cause a broken heart. Infidelity. When the husband is cheating on the wife or the wife is cheating on the husband and it discovered it can cause a broken heart. Rejection. When nobody wants to be around you, nobody wants to be with you. You're rejected. Every time you turn this way, you're rejected. You turn that way, you're rejected. It can lead, if you're not careful, to a broken heart. Other kind of romantic experiences can also lead to a broken heart. We talk about brokenheartedness is a result of a deep emotional pain or stress that is related to some kind of loss in your life. Because the death of a loved one, the death of a loved one can also cause a serious brokenheartedness. Now, as we said earlier, there's some things you have control over. And there's some things you have no control over. If that individual is one that you loved, do you think that you will want to see that person die? The answer is no. You wouldn't want to see that person die. So if you love them and the person passes away, grieving is part of life. But if you allow grief to take you over where your appetite is gone, your desire to live is gone, then you have actually crossed the line. You are now trying to get into God's business. Because the truth be told, 
Yes, we love each other. Yes, we care about each other. But the truth is, we are all individually responsible to God for the life we live, the things we do. Mama is not going to answer for daughter. Daughter is not going to answer for mama. Papa is not going to answer for son. Son is not going to answer for papa. All of us must answer for ourselves. Death of a loved one can cause a broken heart. Especially the kind of death where there was no kind of uh, prior kind of an indication. The kind of death where you anticipated that the person will get well. May I just tell somebody quickly that sometimes one can be too sick to die. In the years of ministry, I have seen where a person was very, very sick. I mean, and we say, well, sick unto death. And guess what? The person got up. They got well. We all got happy. And in the midst of our joy and excitement, bam, they died. Yes, there are times when one can be too sick to die. And death is one of those means, ways by which our hearts can be broken. And because our heart has been broken, it leads us to want to just give it up. Just give it up. I mean, you know, what's the need? What's the reason? I want you to understand God has a plan for your life. Yes, you love the, the one who passed away. But in the end, it is God who has a plan for your life. Bankruptcy can also cause a broken heart. One minute you're doing so well, and the next minute you're filing for bankruptcy. In America, there was a very famous politician who recently filed for bankruptcy because of the enormous debt that came his way so swiftly. Brokenheartedness can be a reason to uh, respond to your loved one, lo losing your loved one, or even bankruptcy. Also, being fired from your job. Being fired from your job. You know? And what makes being fired from your job painful, stressful, emotional, it's not so much of being fired from the job. No, that's, that's not what really creates the problem. The problem comes because of the obligations that you took on as a result of the job. Because of the job, you took on the responsibility of a mortgage. Because you have a job, you took on the responsibility of a card note. Because of a job, you took on the responsibility of an insurance, health insurance, 501, whatever it is. You took all of those things on because you had a job. You created all kind of debt because you had a job. You had a budget to live by. And then you go to work and they tell you, you are fired. It can become one embarrassing because you begin to think about, whoa, foreclosure. 
repossession, cancellation, bad credit, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All of these things coming at you at one time can cause a broken heart. Also, divorce. Divorce can also create a broken heart. Terminal medical diagnosis. You go to the doctor today, you're feeling good. It's just that you got up this morning and you felt some kind of a pain over here, over there. And you go to the doctor and the doctor says, you have six weeks to live. It can happen. It can happen. That too can cause a broken heartedness. But as I said to you in the beginning, these things can happen and will happen or may happen that will cause a broken heartedness. But it is treatable. It is only when you fail to treat what you're going through that then it can lead to something bad where you're so depressed that you stop eating. You're so depressed, you stop taking your medication. You're so depressed, you cannot sleep. You're so depressed, you just go in a dark room and lock yourself up. You're so depressed. And then that's when a broken heart can end up in causing bad decisions that then leads to bad actions and those bad actions can lead to untimely death. Those of you who are in America, you remember that beautiful lady called Whitney Houston? The young lady could sing com comparable to even angels. Whatever happened to her life, you saw what happened with her daughter. The daughter followed that same path. Who knows? The daughter was probably broken hearted and found no reason for living. That's what, if you don't treat it, it will do to you. When you come to the place to see and to think that there is no need for you to be alive. And you say, what, what's the use? What's the use? And the enemy can play tricks on your mind to make you think that there is no reason for you to live the best person in your life, the best thing ever happened to you is gone. So why must I live? Yes. The song says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fears are gone. Because he lives. Life is worth the living because he lives. God is interested in the business of a broken heart. Let me share with you a scripture and then I will stop today to see if anyone has additional question. And tomorrow we'll spend some time just looking at scripture after scripture that will deal with the whole question of where is God in the business of a broken heart. Listen to this. This was 
David, when he was discovered, when David was exposed, here's the king. Here's the one that we all believe is the apple eye of the Lord. And he was exposed. Listen to what David said. David said in the book of Psalm, and I want to share that with you. He said here, beginning from verse 1, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. Psalm number 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shipping in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward part, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide not thy face from my sin, and blood out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation. And my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show for thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else I will give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. Listen to this. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, thou will not despise. What do you do with a broken heart? Please go to God. Lay it all out before him. And let him know how you feel. Because God is interested in the totality of your well-being. That's why in 3 John we read, Beloved, I wish above all that I will prosper and be in good health. And because God said he wants you to be in good health, a broken heart is not a recipe for good health. It's not. If not treated, it can be a recipe for death. We'll stop here today and pick back up on tomorrow, laying out some scriptures and how we go about dealing with a broken heart. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.